Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Tom Wagner. And as you know, every month we strive to focus on a different department, different programs and responsibilities. We have a $144 million budget, 19 departments, over 200 programs and services, a lot going on. And today we're very pleased for perhaps some of you to meet for the first time our new County Corporation Council, Crystal Fieber. Welcome. Thank you, Adam. Good Welcome. morning, Tom. It's nice to have you here. Uh, Crystal uh, took over the reins from Carl Bizzing, who was our Corporation Counsel for a number of years. But let's start with you, Crystal. Sh please share a little bit about yourself, your background, and, and introduce yourself to the community. Sure. Um, so I'm a Sheboygan County native, grew up in Sheboygan County, graduated from Plymouth High School. After that, I went to the University of Wisconsin in Madison, go Badgers. Mm -hmm. um, majored in political science and international relations. After college, I moved back to Sheboygan County, lived in Plymouth for a year, and worked saving money for law school. Um, so I sold cell phones and, and bartended. Um, then I attended the University of Missouri in Columbia, Mizzou. And while there, I was the editor-in-chief of the Missouri Environmental Law and Policy Review. I also worked at a small law firm that focused on personal injury work and interned at the Missouri Attorney General's office. After law school, I found my way back to Sheboygan County and started with my current firm, Hop Newman Humpke, in 2006. And as you mentioned, um, recently have taken over as corporation counsel from my predecessor, Carl Bizzing. He retired at the end of 2018. Uh, but prior to that, I had had a lot of contact with the county department heads, staff, and so was, was well aware of, of the county workings um, because of having started with the firm in 2006. Absolutely fair to say you hit the ground running. It's been a seamless transition, and, and uh, you've been well received by the team. So it's going Thank well. Thank you, Adam. I forgot that you were a Badger. I'm a Badger as well. Go Badgers, right? Are you going to a football game here in the upcoming future? I'd like to. I don't currently have tickets. Yeah. Well, I'll see if I can help you out there. Right. I actually try to get to a game a year. Well, again, good to have you here. Please touch on the primary roles and responsibilities of being a corporation counsel. Some folks might be wondering, well, what do they do? The, the Corporation Council provides all of the, the civil legal services for the county. So whereas the DA's office works on, on the criminal matters occurring within the county, um, my office handles the civil matters. So we advise the elected officials, elected and appointed officials, the department heads. Um, we're responsible for providing ethics opinions if any of the officials have ethics questions. We draft the legislation, resolutions, and ordinances on which the county board acts, um, and, and just any of the general legal matters. And Tom, how has your advice been so far? <laughs> no, it's been excellent. No, she sure does a really good job. <laughs> well, I've known Crystal a long time, in all honesty, but uh, no, it was a very smooth transition. We looked for that to happen because one of the things I'll just add is uh, we're a little unusual in Sheboygan County that we contract with a private firm and it's worked out wonderful in my opinion for Sheboygan County. We've looked at it a number of times. Usually if there are size, a lot of times they'll have an in-house corp counsel, but we believe that uh, not only do we have the advantage of uh, Crystal's services primarily, but we also get other people in our office who have different expertise. So uh, we're getting more for our buck, we believe, in Sheboygan County. And that is a perfect segue to my next question. If you could, you know, share a little bit about how your office is structured and as a contracted uh, department or service, how long has this been in place? We do have a really unique relationship with Sheboygan County. Since 1955, my firm has been representing the county as the outside corporation council. I believe we're one of three of the counties within the state of Wisconsin that handles uh, their corporation council that way. Most of them, as, as Tom said, are in-house corporation councils. Um, but in 1955, attorney Alex Hopp uh, became the Corporation Counsel for Sheboygan County, and then that work has stayed with my firm uh, since 1955. And you work with a number of very talented partners. Well, thank you. Um, I do. There are six attorneys in my office currently. Uh, attorney Mike Bauer handles a lot of the real estate work for the county. He was instrumental in the acquisition of Amsterdam Dunes. Uh, we have attorney Phil Miller, who works closely with Laura Henning-Lorenz in the county treasurer's office in the in-rem proceedings. 
and for, for the viewers that may not be familiar with that, an in-rem proceeding is when um, there's a tax foreclosure for unpaid property taxes. Right. So there's a court process that Phil navigates with uh, Laura Henning Lorenz. We also have attorney Herb Humkey. Herb does a lot of litigation for the firm and, and for the county when there's a litigation matter. Um, we'll ask Herb to participate in that. There is attorney Paul Dirksy. Uh, he has he came to the firm in 2002 with a background in, in child support enforcement and guardianship matters. Uh, Paul also does a lot of real estate work. And then our newest member of the firm is attorney Oliver Bauer. He works closely with uh, the Planning and Conservation Department on sanitary ordinance enforcement. He does um, the, the caretaker maltreatment cases for the county. Um, and he fills in for our assistant corporation counsel, who I'll get to in just a minute, um, when she's absent. So um, our office does fill in that way for her. And although not a member of my firm, on my table of organization, I do have an assistant corporation counsel who is excellent. Her name is Samantha Bastel. Um, she handles the child support enforcement and the mental health commitments um, and the adult guardianship cases for the county. Yeah, wonderful overview. And, and if you're wondering, you know, well, if only three counties in the state have contracted corporation council services, does this really make the most sense for Sheboygan County? And the answer is yes. Not only do we have this wonderful track record dating back to 1955, but we've looked at it. In fact, we've looked at it on a couple of instances and compared and contrasted continuing with, with contracted services versus bringing it in-house. And both times we've concluded that we receive better service and a stronger team with a contracted approach, and the cost is actually more cost-effective uh, with the approach we have. So we're fortunate. I, I presume in some counties that just wouldn't work, but it's worked very well here. And, and, it, and again, we're glad Crystal now has the reins and is, and is leading the charge. So as, as people may think about an organization of our size, I mean, obviously there's so much going on, providing services, dealing with challenging cases, whether it's health and human services, child custody, custody, law enforcement. I mean, there's so much going on that can involve the need for legal advice. But if you boil it down, what would you say are some of the more routine responsibilities that the Corporation Council Office has? We do a lot of, of contract review, contract drafting for the county, um, drafting the ordinance and resolutions, as I mentioned before, so there's a lot of that. Um, and public records requests. So the, the county gets numerous requests every week for the, the public who are interested in, in obtaining records. And, and so many times those will be sent to us if there is some concern from a department head or records custodian about the release of the records. Many of them are released routinely without our office's involvement. Um, but we do regularly review those record requests as well. Yeah, And I know Tom and I both rely on your office a lot, rely on you specifically a lot just for legal interpretations. Even if an ordinance is in place, there still may be some interpretation of that language or statutes that we need interpretation absolutely. on, and, and you do a great job with that. So thank you. Tom? Right, absolutely, and the law is always changing, right? I mean, it's, it's not changing. static. I mean, there's no doubt about that. In Sheboygan County, we're always looking to uh, make improvements, and there's going to be some changes in your office uh, coming up for next year. You want to talk about them a little bit? Yes, we do have some big changes coming. So my office will be hiring a, another attorney um, to handle the, the CHIPS, TPRs, and guardianship cases for the county. Um, CHIPS are really children who are in need of, of protection and or services. Um, those are children who come into the system because their parents are unable to care for them and the county steps in and um, through the court system places them either with, with relatives or with a foster family so that they can, can get the care that they need. Um, the TPR cases are termination of parental rights cases. So the goal is always reunification with a parent. Um, sometimes that's not possible. And, and then the county is, is in a position where we need to be looking at terminating parental rights so we can give these children some, some permanency for their future um, and some certainty about, about where they're going to be in a year. Um, so we will be taking those cases over from the district attorney's office, which is a trend that we've been seeing statewide um, over the last several years. So the statutes provide that either the district attorney's office or corporation counsel can handle these kinds of matters for the county. Um, 
and in our case, we're going to be making that, that transition. At the end of August of, of 2019, we had in Sheboygan County, we had 230 kids who were in out-of-home placement. Um, that's a lot of kids, and we're seeing that number steadily rise. Over the last five years, there's been um, a very significant increase in the number of children who have been placed out of homes. Along with those placements, there is certainly a cost. Um, and so those costs are, are state mandates to the, the county, an unfunded mandate. Um, so the county is also paying for these children to be placed out of homes. Um, in 2013, that cost was about 1.1 million. In 2019, we're projected at about 2.2 million. So um, that gives you an idea of, of the cost of this. Uh, the average child is waiting about 3.3 years um, out of home before there's some some permanency or certainty for that child. So with this transition to my office, we're really looking to shorten the amount of time that a child is, is in an out-of-home placement. Um, there are some parameters that we work with within the statute, and it's a very serious situation when we're talking about terminating a parent's parental rights. So uh, not approaching this lightly, but want to, to the degree we can, um, make this an easier process for the children going through this, this difficult time. Yeah, there's just some times where there's no question, and those numbers are sad, frankly. Um, but in some instances, the child has to be somewhere else simply for their own protection. Absolutely. Yeah. And you kind of talked about it, so, and, and, and maybe if you want to just reiterate or whatever, uh, why do you think this is so important to move this over to your, to your office? Well, I, I think it's so important because we're, we're looking to change the model in that um, we're going to have one dedicated person. So we will be hiring a new attorney. So certainly if any of our viewers um, are, are members of the state bar and, and, and interested um, or know someone who, who might be interested, we're looking at making a new hire. Um, this person will work closely with Health and Human Services. We want this person to be working with the social workers uh, throughout those CHIPS proceedings to make sure that the files are properly documented. And it's not that our, our social workers aren't doing a good job now, they are. Um, but we think with having an attorney more closely involved throughout the process that we are going to be able to create some efficiencies when it comes time um, if we are in that situation where we're terminating parental rights. So we think it's an important transition um, and, and are, are hoping that we can create um, some efficiencies in that process. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Um, are there any other key projects that I know that uh, you're working on for the county right now? One of the key projects is um, the U.S. Customs Facility. So as you're well aware, we um, have the Ryder Cup coming September 2020. Um, so that should be a, a, an economic boom for our county. Um, and the Kohler Company has a lot of international travel even outside of the Ryder Cup. But we're looking to have the U.S. Customs Facility up and running at the Sheboygan County Airport to service anyone who's, who's coming in internationally for the Ryder Cup. Um, but even after that, we're expecting that there will be use, significant business use from Kohler Company as the main user, but also our other local businesses um, who may have some international travel. So we're working to get the customs facility constructed, and that's well underway. We also have a funding arrangement with Kohler Company as the main user of the customs facility. Kohler Company has stepped up and will be funding uh, the U.S. Customs Officer. There will also be, a, it will be a user fee facility. So while Kohler Company will be entirely responsible for that funding for the first three years of, a, of a, an agreement that's roughly 30 years, it'll go through 2050. After the first three years, there will be user fees at the county airport. Um, and those user fees are, will be charged to anyone who's using the customs facility. So not people who are using the airport in general, just those who are using customs at the airport. So I think that's a really exciting project and, and probably my favorite project that we have going on right now. Yeah, it's a big deal and, and it's a big change. I know Road America uses uh, people fly into Road America too. The Sheboygan County is a destination for Absolutely. a number of things with the golf courses and the racetrack. Those are two without a doubt that stand out in my mind always as a destination. You don't find those two things in many counties without a doubt we're unique in that regard um what do you think is the most time consuming and challenging work that you've been doing for the county in your p new position 
one of the most time consuming pieces for me is other than dealing with me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> outside of dealing with the county board chair. Yes. Um, one of the more time consuming things that I work on uh, relates to our Health and Human Services Department. Um, it's a huge department for the county, it and is. there's a, a lot of, of different legal issues occurring within that department. Um, because of the nature of their work, there is a lot of federal law and state law, and then we have our, our county code, and so there are a lot of different places that I need to be looking when there's a legal issue that arises at Health and Human Services. So we have HIPAA is our federal law that protects our, the release of medical information, so we're always checking that. And then we have state confidentiality laws. There are special laws related to the release of mental health or drug treatment records versus juvenile records. And so there are really a lot of places to look when there's questions that arise related to, to records releases um, at Health and Human Services. And sometimes those come in the form of, of general public records requests. Sometimes those come in the form of, of discovery during litigation. Um, an attorney may be requesting those records from Health and Human Services. So that's probably one of the more time-consuming um, mm -hmm. pieces that I do. In terms of, of challenging, um, one of the, the things I really like about my job is the, the variety. So that's, it's always a challenge when you're faced with something new every week and for multiple times a week I have an issue arise that I've never encountered before. Um, so I would say that part is challenging, but also the part of what part of what makes my job great. I think I would be bored if mm -hmm. it was very routine um, and I had the same questions coming at me every day. No, I, I, county government is far from boring in many instances. Going back a little bit to the health and human services, I just wanted to, yeah, I think a lot of people aren't aware, other than the Milwaukee County, which the state operates their health and human services, the other one, 71 counties, we really deliver the services for the state of Wisconsin and in some instances federal flow through funds uh, from Washington DC so that's constantly changing and that's why that department is rather large because it's the counties who are uh, delivering all those services just another example of something that's going on would be juvenile detention they're looking at closing their juvenile detention up by Wausau and it would be the counties who would take that over uh, and basically build I think now they're looking at four new buildings and things like that so it's it's just a constant change in that area and they're always changing the regulations all the time so it is complex so I appreciate all your work with that so Adam yeah, thanks Tom as you mentioned Health and Human Services our largest department so much going on there critical safety net services and obviously you have a assistant corporation council that spends some time there and with child support please share a little bit about that role of your your assistant corporation council and what their primary functions are because they're very critical to our operations. They, they are. So Sam Bastel, she handles the, the child support enforcement. So she's frequently in, in court um, related to those issues. Then the, the Chapter 51 mental health commitments. So if there is someone who is, is a, a risk to themselves, um, those individuals will be taken in to, to have their, their mental health evaluated and then there, there's a, a hearing to determine whether or not they are, are um, at risk of harming themselves. So she handles those hearings as well. And then she does the guardianship. Sometimes we have adults who are not in a position to care for themselves. Uh, sometimes those are, are um, dementia issues and they don't have relatives in the area who are able to care for them. Um, so a neighbor might report that, that, there's a, that they have a concern um, and it comes to the county's attention and then Sam steps in and is involved in, in the court proceeding to determine whether or not this individual is able to care for themselves. If, if it's determined that they're not, um, then there is, is typically a corporate guardian appointed and that corporate guardian assists with, with the, the care of this adult. Um, that's the financial care, medical treatment, um, and day-to-day and -day, uh, living care. Yeah, heavy lifting. Sam, I think, is fantastic and really heavy matters to deal with, dealing with a lot of emotions and, and just challenging situations, and she does it very effectively. Yeah, well, thank you for that overview. So, of course, all these programs, these services, whether it's the Corporation Council Department or one of the other 19 departments, it takes funds to operate Sheboygan County government. Um, I think many of our viewers know that county government is the right arm of state government. Most of what we do is mandated by the state. And sadly, there's this 
long track record of the state requiring programs and services but not necessarily providing sufficient funds to implement them. We have the property tax levy as our primary county board means of raising revenue to support programs and services. And of course, people don't want to see their property taxes go up, and we all get that. And the board has a wonderful track record of holding the line. With that said, now we have a one-size-fits-all property tax cap in place uh, associated with net new construction. And this is where folks might start to get a little fuzzy on, well, what does this all mean? Mm -hmm. Essentially what it means is the county is only able to raise property taxes now by a certain amount tied to net new construction. Can you, in layperson language, you know, share that statutory um, umbrella that counties work with? Sure. So this, this levy limit was really imposed in, in 2011. So we had a little bit more flexibility before that time. Um, starting in 2011, the legislature imposed the, the levy limit that would be equal for each municipality to the percentage increase in net new construction. And what that means um, is it's, it's the equalized value of net new construction. So that's the fair market value. I think most people know that we have municipal assessors. They come out and they give your, your, uh, your property an assessed value. Um, that's all then submitted to the State Department of Revenue, and the, and the Department of Revenue comes up with an equalized value. Um, so the, the percentage that each municipality can increase their property tax levity is, is then limited to that percentage increase in equalized value of net new construction. So the percentage increase in fair market value. Um, that's going to vary widely between municipalities. Municipalities that have a lot of development going on, they're obviously going to have a, a higher percentage and a little bit more flexibility in, in determining their levy limit because that, that levy limit is going to be higher. Um, and then there's some municipalities that are going to be, you know, stagnated. If they have no net new construction, that that, then they do not get to increase their levy limits is, is how it generally works. So the challenge with that that the county board is faced with, that we're all faced with as, as department heads or uh, very engaged with the budget development is, you know, the question people may pose, well, what does net new construction have to do with providing law enforcement or addressing mental health issues or dealing with termination of parental rights or guardianship? I mean, really, there's no relationship with net new construction in providing these services, some of which are on the rise. Uh, fortunately, the county board, led by Tom Wagner, implemented the half percent sales tax a few years ago, so now we have a a reliable funding source for our transportation system, and we're doing great work out there dedicating that toward transportation and property tax relief and sharing it with other municipalities. But my concern, having been in this role now for a little over 20 years, is the board has done such a remarkable job holding the line on property taxes well before this cap went into place. Uh, but to put this in perspective, the net new construction increase this year was 1.26%. Now, if you're a fan of not seeing your property taxes go up, which I certainly am, that may not sound all bad, but 1.26% is not enough revenue to cover wage and benefit increases alone, yet alone other needs. For example, one of the key things we're dealing right now is the possibility of expanding our detention center. We can borrow as much as we want by state law, but to operate it, it will cost us over a million, closer to $2 million to staff that detention center if we, if we put a big uh, $20 million addition on. So the, the question, Crystal, is if net new construction is not sufficient going forward to cover our basic programs and services, to maintain what we have, yet alone address other needs, such as a detention center that's full to the brim, what, what, um, alternative does the county board have to try to raise additional revenue to meet these needs? The county board would be able to submit it to a referendum, which really means that the county board would submit it to the voters, and the voters would determine whether or not we could exceed um, that percentage increase in net new construction. Um, so there would need to be a certain an explanation as to why 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 would we be asking for the referendum, um, and then the voters would see it as a question on their ballots. Right. 
and this may be something going forward that the county board's going to have to do. And I personally do not relish that idea. I am a big fan of supporting local control, which is why Tom Wagner and the county board was elected by their constituents. But we may get to a point where just to provide basic wage and benefit increases to cover ongoing costs, we may have to go to a referendum to maintain programs and services. So. I share this and appreciate Crystal's explanation, so our viewers appreciate that this may be a new approach going forward for Sheboygan County in the next two, three years on how we uh, operate our organization. And it's one that gives us all some angst because as you can imagine, going to referendum to justify a, a cost of living pay increase for our correctional officers or whatever it may be, uh, feels almost punitive. Uh, it's, it's a difficult way to operate your organization, especially one as complex as ours. So. Well, and absolutely, and I think everyone is generally aware of the percentage increases in, in health care costs in, in terms of health care insurance. That alone, um, you know, I've seen numbers 12%, 15%, 22%. Um, so those are huge percentage increases. And when we're talking about an organization the size of Sheboygan County, 1.26% really isn't going to cut it, right. um, even for health care costs alone for the right. insurance coverage. Right. So more, more to be discussed there, but wanted to bring that up. Next month we'll be talking more about our proposed 2020 budget. We're in good shape for 2020, but every year it's getting tighter and we're getting closer, I think, to those types of referendum discussions. I want to end it with a final question, and this is so important to all of us and our organization's success. We want more people to be involved with our county organization. All of the county board meetings are open to the public. All of the committee meetings are open to the public. What would your be, advice be, Crystal, on how people can become more engaged or provide input or suggestions to the organization? Well, certainly there's always the option to contact their elected officials. All of the, the county board supervisors have their contact information um, on the county website. If you go to Directory of Officials, you can find out who is your representative official if you're not familiar, um, and certainly you can reach out to that individual and, and express concerns, ideas. Um, I think that's one of the, the really great aspects of, of county government and, and local government is that the elected officials are available. Um, we sometimes don't get that same direct contact with state representatives because it's just a much bigger area that they cover. But um, the, the county officials certainly are available to the constituents if, if they want to reach out and contact them. Um, they certainly can write in to the county board if they, they don't feel like calling. Um, and there is an opportunity for a public address at the county board meetings. We do have that built into the agenda. So from time to time, we will have citizens who request to appear if there's something on the county board agenda on which that person would like the county board um, to know their viewpoints. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you for the last 30 minutes. That went by pretty quickly, yeah, didn't yeah. it? Thank you, Crystal. Well, thank you. So we appreciate your time. We appreciate your leadership. And we appreciate your firm's good work benefiting Sheboygan County and all the citizens here. So thank you so much. Thank and thank you, you for joining us. Uh, if you have any further questions about our Corporation Council services, don't hesitate to contact myself or Crystal directly. You can look at our website and you'll see the numbers and contact information for the different departments. Next month, we're going to be talking about our 2020 budget, our proposed budget. We're just about wrapping up the process. The board will be the final decision maker here in the end of October, but we'll talk a little bit about what's what's the budget look like, and some of the wonderful initiatives that are in play ahead. So until then, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next month.